We missed it being like topical though. Like there was a little, there was a second there where like everyone was talking about it. But I think, I think it's better this way. Cause like everyone's had like some time to like rest. You I know? think it gives us more to talk about too, personally. Yeah. We can talk about the, how people have taken it. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I did write um, a parody of one of the songs for an intro. Ooh, are you going to play it? Are you going to play it live? I was going to play it, yes. Nice. I was wondering why the guitar was right there. Yes, that's why the guitar is right there. A stolen intro An echo That shouldn't have been there Opinions that aren't fresh at all A spoiler for a movie you already saw Is this heaven? Or is it just a white boy? A white boy's podcast White boy White boy's podcast I think we need to do that every episode I think that needs to be the new thing that we have. <laughs> it's recorded now, so if you wanted me to, I could stick it at the front of every episode. I think I think that's good. All right. Welcome back to This is a Terrible Place to Live. Indeed. Um, and if you don't know what the intro was, uh, Wow. I mean, I guess you're either not on TikTok. Mm-hmm. I'm just probably it. I mean, if you haven't you haven't seen the special, either, right? That, that's. I mean, I was just thinking like they might not have seen the special, but you, I don't know. You can not have seen the special and still know what that is. That's true because I was on uh, I was at work the other day and one of my coworkers was on TikTok and I heard. Um, the Jeff Bezos song playing over his TikTok. And I was like, Oh, I love the special. And he was like, what? And I was like, Oh, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're talking about inside. Um, we were going to do this last week. Uh, uh-huh. was it last week? I thought it was like two weeks ago. It was last week. I have no bearing of time. It was, um, beginning of last week. Oh, uh, that's what it is. It was Wednesday. And then, so now it's Tuesday of the next week. So almost exactly a week later. Uh, It's been three weeks since I've seen it and probably more since you've seen it. I saw it the day after it came out. Yeah. So it's been a while. (laughs) Um, But uh, I re-listened to half of the album today Mm -hmm. um, and it's pretty fresh on my mind still. Um, (laughs) The the reason we didn't record last week... um, is because we went to see a movie beforehand. We went to go see Zola. I, <laughs> half of me was like, we should just ditch this, do an episode on Zola. I did consider that as well, but like... There's a lot to say about that movie. Yeah. We could just get sidetracked right now. Well, We could we could title the episode Inside, then it's just, just a Zola. whole Zola episode. Um, I think we might want to do an episode on Zola in the future, but... I don't think today. I don't know. The thing is, last week I kept thinking, oh, we should talk about Inside. But my brain was so focused on the movie we had just seen that I could not switch gears. And yeah. I was like, I, I don't even remember what Inside is about because I'm still focused on the insane movie we'd just seen. So, yeah, just penis on the brain, you know? Penis on the brain, uh, man titty uh, yeah. on the brain. Um, what's his name? Uh, Zach Braun, is that his name? The dude who played... Uh, the, the dude from Sky High. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, he's the best part of that movie. Oh, uh, anyway. So that's that's why um, this is late now, but I think it's actually given me time to see some more things to talk about. Um, so I feel like we should like rate the tracks at first, right? Oh, should we? But not like not like our like our rating system. Oh, like rank them? Yeah, let's. I feel like we should rank Ooh. the songs. Can you can you insert the the Watch Mojo? Um, do they have a song or the, something? The, welcome to Watch Mojo's. Yeah, put that here. Top five songs from Bo Burnham's Inside Out. Yeah, yeah. Let's Inside do, Out. Inside Out. The Pixar movie by Bo Burnham. Inside <laughs> Out. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, let's wait. So like we're doing our top five. Are we doing a watch mojo top five? <laughs> I feel like we should like I feel like we should rank it, obviously. Okay. Um if you want to do a top five, we can do that. Just in general, giving like some sort of like because I, I think we both said we liked at first at least, we both said we liked the same one as like the best song. But it may have changed over time for you. Um, my favorite has remained my favorite from first viewing. It, it's just so good. Um, we we can uh, how are we gonna do this? Um, I, I feel th- like I feel like we should just say which one is our favorite because I think it's the same one for both of us. I say we go through the entire album, listing our favorites in order, uh, simultaneously. We just talk over each other. And no one hears it. In order from most favorite or least favorite? You can do what you want to do. I'll do what I want to do. Oh, okay. Gotcha. (laughs) Okay. One, two, three, go. Um, Sexting. Uh, uh, Jeff Bezos. Problematic. Who's inside again? (laughs) I'm not doing it in any specific (laughs) order. (laughs) I was going least to most. Oh, okay. Um, But no, okay. So um, I will say my least favorite song on, on. in the entire special is sexting. It's just so heterosexual, uh, in, in, in a very, I almost skipped it when watching. I thought it was funny. I was like, eh, I it was it. funny. <laughs> I just didn't enjoy it. I think my least favorite is probably 30. Oh, I really liked 30. I mean, like I enjoyed it when I was watching it. And like, if I watched the special, like I'll obviously like enjoy it again. But, like, it's not one that, like, I'll, like, I'll probably skip it if I'm listening to the album, to be honest. And I said I listened to half of the album. I actually listened to all except for three songs because mm-hmm. I skipped sexting. And then I, I stopped um, before the last two, which is Goodbye and Any Day Now. Yeah. Um, I would say I would say 30 is pretty up there for me, actually, because I really like the My Stupid Friends Are Having Stupid Kids that's um, good. It's I a did good like part. That. I like that. I also really like that um, a lot of the songs get cut off abruptly, mm-hmm. like a large number of them. And during the special, I don't think it's as noticeable, right? Because it's it feeds editing. into something, yeah. But when you're listening to it as an album, it's more noticeable because I think like in in like musicals or movies that have like a song in them, a lot of times they will cut it off in the middle abruptly Mm -hmm. with editing. But then if you're like listening to the soundtrack later, there's a full song. Mm -hmm. Whereas when it gets cut off abruptly, that's just the end of the song. Yeah. (laughs) And, and sometimes I wonder if he did write more, but then in editing, he cut it and then was just like, Nope, that's the end of the song now. Mm -hmm. Cause it, it doesn't feel like some, it doesn't feel like he wrote it to abruptly end there. It feels like he wrote it and then decided it ended there. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I really liked that. Uh, some of the, I was thinking though, some of it works better, like within the special, like, uh, with the visuals that he has, um, like, so as music, I would probably list things differently than I would as like routines within a comedy special. That's fair. You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. I think, oddly enough, I think White Woman's Instagram works better as a song than it did in the special. Like oh, I in, disagree. In the special, I wasn't particularly fond of it. I didn't think it was all that funny. But then listening yeah. to it as a song, I was like, oh, this is actually decently funny. I, so I, I'll admit something I'm not uh. super proud of. Um, I cried listening to white woman's Instagram. Oh, in the middle, at the the verse at the end, the verse where he's like the letter to her mom. That part's so good. That's the best part of the song. So I almost cried when during that part just today. Um, and I, I don't know how to feel about that, but like, (laughs) I love that part of the song. Like that specific, like bridge will get stuck in my head. Um, I'm just like, Oh, that's really good. (laughs) It's a really catchy song. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's that's why I chose to do that one as the uh, parody for the intro. But I think probably uh, content-wise, that's the least interesting. Yeah, on the entire special. Um, 
I don't think we, we got to go through like the entire album and rank every song. No, it's I just a pretty... wanted to know. I just wanted to know like which ones were your standout. Oh, okay. So let's do like our favorite ones then. Okay. Okay. Do you want to do number one first? Ooh. Sure. Let's do number one first. Sorry about that. That was a soundboard sound effect. We're becoming <laughs> one of those podcasts. <laughs> we should get a soundboard. And like, instead of just having like quick little sounds on the soundboard, you press a button and then I'll have like a long monologue that'll play. Um, but that'll be like the running bit. Um, but you just have to sit through a monologue anytime we do that joke. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. <laughs> okay. So our favorites, um, my favorite, All Eyes on Me. Best song. Same. That is also my favorite. So good. Album. Every time I listen to it, I still get goosebumps. It's just... It's a good song from the... It, in the special, it's a good song. But then uh, just listening to it as a song, uh -huh. it's just a really good song. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, you can play it anywhere. Whereas some of them, it's like... It, it's a comedy song. And it's meant to be a comedy song. And you can't really separate it from that. That's the thing. Out of all the songs that are on the special, um, that's like the one that I've put on like my playlist and stuff. Where it's not like, oh, then this is a comedy song. So I'll like kind of skip this one. I'm not in like the mood for comedy. You know what I mean? Right. This, right. That one I'll just listen to. Um, and that funny feeling is also kind of like that, but I, I haven't listened to it as much, but it, it is very good. Um, yeah. All Eyes and Me, definitely the best one. It's very similar in some ways to like the, the Kanye rant at the end of what? Um, and I love that. I love that so much. I don't think I've heard that. I didn't. I don't really listen to much Kanye. I haven't just in general. Oh no! At the uh, at the end of Bo Burnham special, what he has? Oh, I. This is the only Bo Burnham content I've ever watched. I didn't oh, okay. see. I haven't seen any of his other specials. I probably should have prefaced with that. <clears throat> the the person who introduced me to Bo Burnham uh -huh. is so dislikable that I just decided Bo Burnham was awful. I think I know who it is. I'm sure you do know who it is. <laughs> um, so they also really like Ben Shapiro. So I was just like, wow, Bo Burnham and Ben Shapiro must be similar. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I just kind of stayed away from him. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, no, uh, it, yeah, for those of our listeners who may have seen uh, his like rant at the end of what it it kind of hits like a similar like uh, climactic like feeling, you know, even though it's not the last song, like it just kind of feels like the peak. You know what I mean? It's like it's like if you're watching a movie and there's the big battle at the end. And then afterwards, like there's the other stuff that happens. Right. They're kind of wrapping everything up. It's the climax of the. Yeah. Yeah. The for sure. Special. Yeah. Um, and every time when he grabs the camera and starts like shaking it around. So good. Never gets old. Um, and it's like a pretty repetitive song too. Like. It's not like there's not like a whole lot going on as far as verses, but I don't know. It's just a good hook. <laughs> We're talking about all eyes on me now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think in the special, uh, my favorite thing about it is that he has, he has a projection of his camera recording him mm -hmm. on the wall behind him. Yeah. During that, I was mostly just focused on the technical, like how did he do, <laughs> how did he do this? Because it was like complicated enough that i was like th how did he plan this and some i of don't know that i figured it out <laughs> from a filmmaking perspective this movie is so impressive it's oh, yeah. so good it is really impressive <laughs> you know so that brings me to the one of the things i was going to talk about from now that we've like we've seen it and we've seen how it's taken off on tiktok uh -huh. and there are people on tiktok who get offended that people don't think it is 100% authentic. 
People legitimately think that Bo Burnham stayed in a room recording himself and put it on Netflix <laughs> as if it was YouTube. Uh-huh. And they get so upset when people are like, it, it's scripted. It's fucking scripted. Yeah, he wrote it. He all. planned. He didn't just set up a camera and record himself. He planned all of this. It's a very obviously a comedy special, not uh-huh. a YouTuber going crazy in a room. Uh-huh. Like, sure, it comes from a real place and it feels very authentic. But like, there are people who legitimately think that. Bo Burnham just went insane in a room for a year to make this on Netflix. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, some of it is obviously real. <laughs> yeah, Some of it is very real. Like, yeah, it yeah. comes from his personal experiences yeah. of, you know, the of pandemic, yeah, yeah. just like everybody else. But he's not, he didn't live in that I think a good room. example is the part where, like, uh, it's transitioning into a song and he's, like, breaking down crying after he's, like, had a spoken part. And it's like, okay there's like a stage cry for like the effect of what's going on now. Right. <laughs> Rather than being like, man, he just broke down sobbing in the middle of that. <laughs> well, and like, um, I feel like there's that one part where he reacts to himself, reacting to himself, reacting to himself, reacting to himself. Uh-huh. And I just feel like to all the people who are like, no, when he's trying to start, talking and he's breaking down and unable to start the song Uh that's real i'm like okay maybe he kept in a couple of bloopers but Uh that i doubt it yeah just uh think about the fact that he definitely did not react to himself reacting to himself reacting to himself (laughs) accidentally that it's not i you don't i uh, uh. People on TikTok think Saki is a real living being. Sako. Sako, sorry. Sako. Man, I'm a fake fan. The fake fan. Okay, that brings me, that's my second favorite song, <laughs> is How the World Works. Um, I think my second favorite is Problematic. I like Problematic too, but How the World Works, definitely my second favorite. It gets stuck in my head constantly. <laughs> I just love it so much. Just the image of Bo against a cross going, I'm sorry. So good. Uh. <laughs> um, also, just like the, the 80s like whip drum going through it. So I love it so much. It's a great song. Very catchy. It is a very good song. I, I like that he... I, I like the structure of the comedy being less about what he's apologizing for and more about the fact that he's apologizing for apologizing, but in the wrong way. And then he's like apologizing for the thing he said at the beginning of the apology. I just, I really like that structure yeah. because I feel like if any other comedian that I can think of that makes similar content had made a song like that Mm -hmm. they would have tried to make the song about the ridiculous things they're apologizing for Mm -hmm. instead of focusing on like the well that would have been the the weird owl joke yeah exactly right gone into like these ridiculous ideas of like (laughs) just i'm apologizing for just nothing right it would have been absurd but like (laughs) this it was definitely like a commentary on like how people are you know like (laughs) This is what happens all the time. They'll go, oh, but like in their apology, they weren't sincere. They didn't say it like this, how they should have. And then they'll make another thing, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it just goes. And then it uh, it also like goes into like, uh, I think a little bit of self-martyrdom where people are like uh, just trying to seem so contrite and sorry for their previous actions when they're not. And then making themselves look like better people for it. You know what I mean? Well, I think that's I think that's also especially tied to comedy. Yeah. That's definitely one of the points he's making. Yeah. I like comedy as well. Uh, but I'm not sure it's one of my favorites. But I, I do like I like the way he talks about the things that he could be called out for Mm -hmm. in the special throughout the entire special. Yeah. Just like 
trying to find where he fits in in pop culture, I guess. Yeah. I feel like he does a decent job dealing with that, but I also can't help but feel like the reason I thought he and Ben Shapiro were similar is because people who like people like Ben Shapiro can listen to his stuff and misconstrue it. Yeah. Especially comedy. Thinking about that song where he's talking about like being a white savior and Uh not shutting up um, where it's like, it's obviously satire, but it could be taken as a satire on the wrong thing. Like, I feel like you can misconstrue it quite easily. And I don't know how I feel about that. And that's also something that I think of like with white women's Instagram, where it could be like people who don't really get the point of it going, Oh yeah, I think women suck. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people on TikTok already use that one to be like, Oh my gosh, look, it's my Instagram. It's like, you also missed the point. (laughs) I feel bad being that person who's like, uh, you didn't get it. Um, you didn't understand it the way I did. (laughs) I knew what the artist meant. He told me. (laughs) I I do feel like, though, there's like some obvious places where it's like. We have guests. My my, my upstairs neighbors that moved in a couple months ago are very loud. Welcome them to the podcast. What do you have to say about Bo Burnham's inside, John's upstairs neighbors? Weird. Normally their dogs would run around. I haven't seen it. Anyway. Actually, I think I heard them listening to it before I watched it. Oh, nice. When I was showering, because I can hear um, everything in every apartment from my bathroom. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rough. <laughs> yeah. Only from the bathroom. But um, no, I'm pretty certain I heard them listening to it. So. Well, what did they think of it? Did you hear any of like their... No, need your no. reactions. Um, I know that their dogs seem to fucking hate it, <laughs> but you know, they dogs. Would. What do they know? Yeah, dogs don't know anything about comedy. Dogs probably thought the whole thing was real. They didn't Bo stage Burnham, any of it. More like bone Burnham. Oh, uh, I thought they were gonna say mo- more like bow wow Burnham. <laughs> <laughs> Little bow wow. Little bow wow. (laughs) Remember Little Bow Wow? What happened to Little Bow Wow? (laughs) Wait, wait, wasn't he in the F9? Little Bow Wow? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen F9. I've only seen the first two Fast and Furious movies. Because, you know, he's he was in um he was in Furious 7 and he was in Tokyo Drift. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's in F9. So what oh, is he Bow doing? Recently? Back? He's in he's in F9. Uh so I, I think guess if you need your little Bow Wow, well, um, Bow Wow he, fix. He just goes by Bow Wow now. Um it's been since like 2008, but He like, grew up. <laughs> He's not so old anymore. <laughs> but but yeah, that's what he's doing. Um, um, I think uh, what we should do is turn this podcast into a true crime podcast <laughs> where we're figuring out where Lil Bow Wow has been for the past <laughs> years until his reemergence in F9. <laughs> I mean, he's in three Fast and Furious movies. We can still figure out where he's been. <laughs> we don't know what he does on his day to day. We're a little bow wow bow wows. <laughs> I'm no, I'm not gonna ask for clarification. It's okay. Where he bow wows? Where he bow wows? Yeah, like a pow wow, but a bow wow. Oh, I did. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> I do think it's interesting. Um, I feel like inside captures the feeling of trying to create content during the pandemic very well. I'm sorry. I took you away from Bow Wow. Yeah. All right. We can go back to the special. I just wanted to get a little more Bow Wowing in. You can slip some more Bow Wows in. Just a little more. A little little more Bow Wow. 
you can slip a little more bow wow in later. <laughs> no. <laughs> I will not be doing that. <laughs> you heard it on the podcast. John just propositioned me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're impossible. Uh, um, no, I was just, it, I think he does definitely capture like the feeling of trying to create content in like a void um, that is, that is both like the pandemic and like, um like when you're just kind of isolated from people in general uh and i it is interesting to me because there's part of me that wants to criticize him for it a little bit because he isn't he isn't not rich at this point yeah um he you know he made eighth grade um <laughs> he's he's definitely well known and probably fairly well off um I, I never know how much you can trust like googling someone's net worth but like you know he's definitely at least not <laughs> yeah, poor. yeah um and i feel like there were a lot of creators on the internet that made similar content consistently throughout the pandemic for free that that did it and released it like immediately right yeah yeah. to the people who were also struggling through their own you know isolation um and i don't want to criticize him for making this because it's really good Uh uh-huh and like obviously he deserves to like make his netflix special yeah, I, I, but I also feel like there's at least some criticism to be had there on that side of things where it's like, because he does, and I, this is mostly thinking about Welcome to the Internet, um, because he does criticize a lot of internet culture, mm-hmm. um, rightfully so, but then also I feel like he takes it from a bit of an extreme angle where he he's kind of criticizing people that are y- using the internet to cope with their shitty lives, you know? So I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. I think it's, uh, that one's a particularly like interesting thing because it falls into that thing that a lot of things do where, uh, it's like, like movies that are about how being addicted to technology is bad. And it's like, but I'm watching a movie. You're criticizing me for consuming the media that you've given me. (laughs) Right. Yeah, exactly. It, it feels like, and also it, this special particularly feels like internet content. Yeah. Right. This doesn't feel like a movie. It's definitely way more polished than like a YouTuber, but it's definitely like in the, like it, it definitely pulls from, the phenomenon of internet um, content Mm -hmm. and it's direct to Netflix. So it, it is by definition, internet content, but like, Mm -hmm. I I don't know. It feels weirdly critical of people doing the same thing that he's doing without Uh being critical of himself, which every other song feels like he's criticizing himself. I don't know. I think in some ways it does feel critical of himself, but it's not from his own perspective. So it kind of shifts it a bit, you know, like he's putting on the persona, right? So then he's criticizing all of those people, but it's not him saying it. It's someone else talking about people who are like him and him. You know what I mean? I mean, maybe. I feel like... I feel like... it, this is weirdly to me like someone who falls squarely into the category of a millennial. Yeah. But who doesn't necessarily like relate to any other people their age mm-hmm. going, oh, you millennials in your avocado toast. 
it, it feels more like that than a millennial going, oh, you know us uh, uh, millennials in our avocado toast. It, you, and which is weird to me because every other song has that sarcastic uh-huh. self-awareness. I think, I don't know. This is one of my favorites on the album, I think. I think it's really good. Um, just in like the structure of it and like as a song, really good. Oh, wait, we got we got away from the list thing that we were doing. So I would say All Eyes on Me, number one. And then uh, number two, Problematic. Then uh, number three, Probably comedy, uh, comedy. I really like that one. And then this is probably four, I'd say for me, or mm-hmm. Jeff Bezos, uh, Jeff Bezos two. Bezos two, not Bezos one. Bezos two, I like better. It's just even more unhinged in my opinion, and just the image uh, that goes with it. So good. <laughs> I like Bezos two better than Bezos one. I'm saying it on the record. Okay, but Bezos 2 is the one where it's just Jeffrey Bezos, Jeffrey Bezos, Jeffrey Bezos. <laughs> yeah, it's Jeffrey great. Bezos. I know. You did it's it. Great. Jeffrey Bezos, Jeffrey Bezos, Jeffrey I Bezos. Love it. Congratulations. That's the entire song. <laughs> I know. I like it better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like the hook. The I like the come on, Jeffrey, you can do it. Pave the way, put your back into it. Did I send you that thing? It's either you send it to me or I send it to you on TikTok where it was like a stocks channel. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Using that song. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> Zuckerberg and Gates and Buffett amateurs can fucking suck it. <clears throat> it's a good song. It is a good song. Um, that's Bezos one. Uh, but Bezos two is even better. Cause I, uh, it's like five <laughs> seconds long. No, I like the part. I like the congratulations. I do <laughs> like the congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> and like the wig and cape or whatever he's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, so that's your four. Do you... that? Mm. So Bezos 2 is your five? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm saying Bezos 2 is probably my five. I'd say All Eyes on Me is definitely my number one. Um, How the World Works is number two for me. Um, I... I, I would have to go with either Look Who's Inside Again or FaceTime with my mom tonight mm-hmm. for three and four. I really like both of those. FaceTime with my mom is pretty low for me. Really? Yeah. I do like it, but like, I don't know. I do, in the special, I didn't think it was super great, but I thought it was pretty funny. And then mm-hmm. listening to it on the album, just I like it as a song. I think it is really just fun yeah like it um look who's inside again though is very good yeah look who's inside again is great um i don't know like comparing all of them it's like even the ones that i don't like as much they're all good (laughs) like it's not like ah but this one's bad and then i think number five for me is content content's good yeah but like yeah no i don't think there's any songs that i'm like that one's bad (laughs) so Maybe sexting. I don't like sexting. John's gone on the record. John doesn't like sexting. <laughs> don't hit him up. <laughs> I don't like the song sexting. <laughs> it's very heterosexual. Not a fan. Sexting is for straight people only. Apparently. <laughs> and apparently, apparently, I've never been on one before. Accidentally. That's what I would say as a kid. When I was little, like if I got in trouble for anything, uh, <laughs> my parents would be like, David, why did you hit your sister? And I'd be like, accidentally. Because I didn't know what it meant. I was just like, I've used this and it's gotten me out of trouble <laughs> at some point. But they've been like, oh, you didn't mean to. But like. I I would always forget to say it was a mistake. And so I'd say mistake has happened. <laughs> It sounds like you're asking for something to be struck from the record in court. (laughs) (laughs) Or they just go, conjecture. (laughs) Mistake. Mistake. (laughs) 
that lawyer messed up. Mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, what was I looking up? Because I was going to look up when the iPad came out. Oh, um, something that has upset me. Uh, inside, it's going to be in theaters soon. You can watch it for one day in theaters around the country. Oh, really? But it's when I work. I'm scheduled already to work. That sucks. I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'd have bought that ticket in a heartbeat. Yeah. Is that for like an Oscars thing? Are they going to try and do an Oscars thing? I don't know. I don't think comedy specials. I, I think it's that, just one like, day. Really? Well, they, it's a documentary film in some ways. I mean, yeah, not like that. All of it's real, but like, cause I know, um, they made, um, exceptions for streaming. Um, last year, last year. And I don't know if they carried over any of those. Cause like some of them were like, it did still have to show in a theater, but if it, but it didn't have to show in as many theaters or as long. Cause I think it used to be like you had to be in a theater for like a certain number of weeks. Well, this is just one day. So I don't think it's for that. Mm. I think it's just so people can see it that way. way. Interesting. I probably will not go see it in theaters. Fair enough. I, I, unless Emilio wants to, because he did want to see it. Um, and he didn't watch it with me cause I watched it by myself cause I didn't think he'd want to see it. Cause I, for some reason I thought he didn't like Bo Burnham. Uh, but then he was like, I, I like Bo Burnham a lot. I have a book of poems from Bo Burnham. So anyway, wow. that's my bad. Wow. Um, Cut him out. Tut tut. Um, I'd watch it again. I just n- not so eager that I'm going to go buy a ticket for the one day it's in theaters. I just think it would have been cool to see, you know? Yeah. Cause it's, it's, it's a spectacle, you know, and seeing it up there. I mean, it makes sense watching it on a laptop, like what it is. That's like, I'd say probably the most natural way to watch it, but like on a big screen would be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so why I was looking up when the iPad came out, mm-hmm. it's cause we were talking about welcome to the internet. Okay. Go ahead. I thought you were just bored. No. I thought John was just, when did the iPad come out? He says in Welcome to the Internet Uh that mommy gave you the iPad to distract you when you were only two. Mm -hmm. The the first iPad came Mm -hmm. out in 2010. So the the oldest a person who was two when the iPad came Mm -hmm. out can be is 13. Mm Mm-hmm. But it does not feel like he is talking to 13-year-olds in that moment. It no. feels like he's talking to people our age, and he just doesn't know what time is. John, you misunderstood it. The whole, po- the whole special is aimed at 13-year-olds. That's his target demographic. That's the target demographic he for him in. dancing in his underwear. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> He's a bad dude. He's problematic. <laughs> yeah. You could say. I'm I don't know. It just I mean it if, could be like, I don't know, the song will be around a while. It cause I don't know. It just feels like that song like has so many things that are like, yeah, this is a good song, and then it gets to a certain point and it starts being super critical in a weird, uncomfortable way. Uh, I think that's a, a trademark of Bo Burnham songs. Like I said, <laughs> I haven't consumed a lot of Bo Burnham. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> David. <sighs> I'll, I'll cut it. Um <laughs> I think you should leave in you saying I'll cut it though, and uh, that was going to was. actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then this part will be in. Yeah. No, no, we planned it. They'll wonder what was it? What did they say? Hmm. That is, um, that is a good question. Um, John called me a cracker, and he didn't want him saying slurs on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> David. Yeah, he called me a honky. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
He said, you're a no good little honky. <laughs> I cried. I cried for hours. <laughs> you recorded for hours while you're crying. <laughs> John has so much footage to cut out. <laughs> Just me sobbing and saying, how could you? <laughs> uh, this, is, this is a great bit. <laughs> So, Lil Bow Wow. What else happened in that? Oh, we talked about Lil Bow Wow through tears. <laughs> I was holding, I said the show must go on. The people want to know about Lil Bow Wow. Now you don't get to. We talked about it for a long time. There was like a solid hour and a half of Lil Bow Wow content. We were just bow wowing all over the place. <laughs> Uh, we could bow out a little more though if you want. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Just a little more bow. Uh, 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 what's your favorite little bow wow song? Sean? I don't know any little bow wow songs. Wow, fake fan. <laughs> fake fan. I never said I was. <laughs> John told me in that time that he was a huge little bow wow fan. John has little Bow Wow posters in this room. <laughs> Does anybody have little Bow Wow posters? I wonder how much little Bow Wow posters are going for on eBay. I, I, I want to know if those are even a thing. Did, did little Bow Wow have posters? Of course, little Bow Wow had posters. <laughs> Silence as we both Google it. <laughs> oh, wow. Did you find some good little Bow Wow posters? Hell yeah, I did. Ah, oh, that's such a good Bow Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should change the name of the podcast to Lil Bow Wow Cast. Lil Cast. Lil Cast. Bow Cast. Lil Pod Wow. No. I am ashamed. Yeah, go back to your corner. Oh, I didn't like that. I will cut it out. I didn't either. You can leave it in, but like, oh, that's what she said. <laughs> no, it's coming. It's getting cut out. I disliked it a lot. Okay. Anyway, good special. Well, we didn't even acknowledge that we were covering two comedy specials back to back. Two of the best, I'd say. Yeah. It's interesting because... Very different. Extremely different. And when we started with the previous episode, I uh -huh. was like, I don't know how we're going to cover a comedy special. But then here we are doing a second one. Yeah. Um, I'd say that both are like subversions of the form, right? Of like a comedy special. Yeah. Where That's fair. Daniel like takes like the very classic approach, right? And then like turns it on its head towards the end. This one is just like throwing everything out and like trying to reinvent what a comedy special can be, I'd say. You know what I mean? And not to say that there aren't, like, creative comedy specials that are, like, outside the box, like um, like John Mulaney and the Sack Lunch Bunch or um, Whitmer Thomas's The Golden One. Um, but, like, I'd say this is, like, very fresh as far as comedy goes. Um, just, like, a new yeah, take on how to do it. It's treating the comedy special... Instead of treating it as um, a stage for doing stand-up mm -hmm. as the only form of comedy that can be considered a comedy special, mm -hmm. it's using a lot of different forms of comedy, mm -hmm. incorporating stand-up and music and set pieces and stuff into a more packaged approach, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, what are your like favorite bits that are outside of like the music? Because we've talked a lot about the music, but like there's other stuff in there. Yeah. Um, the one that stands out to me is the the video game. Oh, the yeah, streamer. me too. The Love video game one. one's so good. It, he streams himself playing a game of himself stuck inside. All you can do is cry. All you can do is cry <laughs> and play the piano and um, sit down. There's something else. There's a, You can pick something up. And I don't remember. Oh. What. Oh, he attempted to open the door, but it was locked. Yeah. Yeah, that I really liked that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually he completes it, and he's like, "Oh, that was that's how it was." Very good. 
I think we should recount the whole special. <laughs> I just that that one. I just we're bringing this bit like. back. <laughs> <laughs> I just really like. It's very clear that he's definitely consumed a large amount of. Oh, of internet content? Modern modern content. Yeah, because right. there's the commentary YouTubers where he's watching the video. There's yep. a, yeah, the fine bro shit. The fine uh. bro's shit, yeah. It, it definitely feels like... Because like sometimes you'll see like a celebrity, um, whether it's a comedian or an actor, and they definitely seem to not be connected to the rest of the world, and they don't know what's going on, so they don't know what a streamer is, and they don't know what... Like Lady <laughs> Gaga tweeting, what's Fortnite? Um, <laughs> did she tweet that? Yes, and I then know that. then Ninja the streamer replied, oh. "We should play together sometime." And she responded, "Who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, that must have been crippling for his ego to just go. I don't know who you are, <laughs> especially because he has like millions of followers. So she clearly is like, "You're verified. You have millions of followers, and I don't know who you are." Like. Who the fuck are you? What is Fortnite? <laughs> but then you get Bo Burnham here, and it's like very clear that he is connected, right? He un- he knows what's going on. He's got his finger on the pulse. At least within our... at least within the past five <clears throat> years, he's got like yeah, right. Because I mean, Twitch has been around for a while, and so has the Fine Brothers shit. But it's like you know, he at least has a grasp of what's happening grounds him a bit yeah yeah so i really liked that that piece definitely i agree that Ooh, something that we had been doing for a little while is imdb trivia oh yeah you want to pull up some imdb trivia about uh this let's see if there is any i'm sure there is i'm sure oh they got a fuck ton they got just things that everyone knows but put in there as trivia Leave this in. I want to hear. I want them to hear you typing. I want them to go. Ooh, good type. Should we bring back the ASMR podcast? No. Leave this in. John. No. We're gonna, we're gonna have so much ASMR podcast in this. See, the thing is, I don't know what John cuts out. We couldn't have done this bit forever. Because I never listen. I never listen to our podcast. I'm a fake fan. <laughs> there is no trivia. I might not be on the podcast. John could just have a podcast where it's just John talking the whole time. And I'm not even there. Oh, there we go. I found it. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you looking at this, the first one? No, I haven't gotten to it yet. Okay. I was D- laughing at my bed. <laughs> the first the first trivia is during the song sexting, the air conditioning unit is set to 69 degrees. Nice. <laughs> that is that is some good trivia. Thanks, IMDB. <laughs> IMDB, the real star of our uh of our podcast. Wait, now I have to know if this is true. Not the 69 thing, a different piece of trivia. Uh, that I will only read if it is true. Oh, um, I need to correct myself. Uh, earlier I said that um, the Kanye rant was at the end of what? It's actually at the end of Make Happy. I switched the names. My bad. What? <laughs> There's one piece of trivia here where it says, continuing one of his quote-unquote traditions... <laughs> He makes a Jewish joke and a dad joke, as he has since his special what, 2013. Is that, is that a, a tra- tradition? Yeah, apparently so. It's like a long family thing. It's like, if you make a comedy special, you got to do the Jewish joke and the dad joke. You have to. For old time's sake. That's very interesting. What are you looking up over there, John? What are you typing away at? They have like this little note that says, just under the 14 minute mark, live streamer Bo Burnham briefly flashes on the screen. Um, Which is true. I went and found it. It just seems like an editing glitch. Huh. 
It's just like he just flashes in the bottom right corner. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. That doesn't really add anything to it. One no, way or the other. I um I misread it. Oh, I, I thought it said he flashed the screen. And I was like, that's not fucking true. Um, His dicks in there? It's not. Um, I, I just s- misread the the trivia. I watched uh, Fisher King last night, the Terry Gilliam movie starring Jeff Bridges and Robin Williams from uh, 1995, I think it was, or 91, maybe. I don't know. It's from the 90s. Uh, there's a scene of full frontal nudity from Robin Williams. I was not expecting that. I saw Robin Williams' dick yesterday. Um, mm. Just thought y'all should all know. It was weird. He was jumping up and down in Central Park completely naked. Um, yeah. I just... Honestly, these are very boring. Yeah. I'm to be kind of let us down today, I'll say. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, there was a quote Ooh. from him from the special that I was like, oh, yeah. Because it's not in one of the songs. Um, but it's just the I've learned over this last year that real world human tactile contact will kill you. And I just, I would just like to say that that was not actually a joke. That was not part of the special. That was true. It was. Um, so don't, <clears throat> don't touch anybody. I could kill John right now. I could <laughs> kill you. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know what that joke was. Bad. That's what it was. It was bad. I think we're running dry here. I think we're running out of stuff. The global network of capital essentially functions to separate the worker from the means of production. I'm sorry. That song plays through my head constantly. Um, <clears throat> is the character from Some More News, Saki? There's like a sock puppet character that's definitely named Saki. I mean, that's like the least creative name for a sock puppet. Oh, I know, but you but you said it was named Socko, but I must have confused it with some other one though. I think that there's I don't know. You can cut this out. This isn't I don't, know. don't know. I don't know why I say like you can cut this out because like that's up to you. That's like entirely at your discretion. You can, as I said earlier, I might not be in the podcast. I don't know. <laughs> I might just it might just be John speaking to the void with like weird gaps in between his speech. <laughs> It'd be a very quiet podcast, honestly. Wow, saying that I talk too much? No. I hog the air? No, we just, we tend to talk in long spurts Mm. and then respond to each other. So it would just be very, very long silences and then me talking for like a minute and then of like another minute of silence. Moment of silence. That was a good moment of silence. Yeah, yes. Um, man, I think this was I think this was a pretty good episode. It's a shame that no one will ever get to hear it. It's a shame that this is a bit podcast that we don't actually have, that we don't actually release it. That what a this shame. is that this is just a joke that we've been doing for years, where we sit down and pretend to record a podcast. But one of us doesn't know. <laughs> I don't know which one of us it is. One of us is just finding this out. One of us is disillusioned and un- unexpected. This podcast is real? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this is the end of the episode, uh, which means we probably should rate it. Watch it. 
four? Yeah, yeah, I think it's a four. I think we're both giving it a two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say that um, like among quarantine content that came out, this and uh, Charlie XCX's uh, "How I'm Feeling Now" are like the two quintessential pieces of things made within quarantine. Those are like I don't that I album. Listen. I don't think I listened to that album, but I may have to go. I probably know songs from it though. So yeah, um, both very good, and both worth checking out. I would say. Yeah, sounds good. I definitely give it a two, so it comes out to a four. So definitely watch it. A perfect score. I think we rarely give opposite ratings. Actually, I don't know. We gave opposite ratings on uh, Dead Poet Society. Mm-hmm. Did we give opposite ratings? I think I gave Dead Poets a one. Oh, I don't know. I'm just thinking about Robin Williams' dick again. Does that lower your score for for Dead, Dead Poets? Poets? I, I th- Did I give it a one? I don't remember if you gave it a one or a zero. I, I don't like it. I probably gave it a zero. Are we going to do a Zola episode? Because then we'll talk about we'll talk about dicks and that. We'll talk about dicks and that. <laughs> I think we already talked about the death of Dick Long on the podcast. Yeah, we did. Uh, I would have liked to have done an episode on that movie. We we did, didn't well, we? No, but like 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 a full episode just about it because I think it was before we like reformatted. You know? Yeah, it was before the reformat, but it was like the main topic of an episode. Yeah, that uh, that movie was good. I want to watch it again. I think I'll bump it up. I think I, I gave it a four. I think it's gonna move up if I watch that movie again. I'm not watching that movie again, so. You won't watch it with me, John? No. <sighs> Great movie. Very, very. I give that movie a two. I Actually, keep... no, I give it a one. I'm not going to say. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't make anyone watch that movie, but I would definitely watch it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, this was fun. Have a good life. Play the outro music, John. Oh, that's my favorite song. <laughs> <laughs>